Hello, I'm Will Henrahan. This is The Buyer's Guide. And the bell has just gone, so it's time for contestants to take their places. In the blue corner, we have the dirtiest trickster on the circuit, Ashley the Terrible Jones, who is going to enlighten us about what in the game's world tonight, Ash? Cool pool. And the game is networking kit. It's all in the way you look. Yes. It's all in the eye action. And resting with your questions, Chris, the Dark Destroyer Long. <laughs> Could have been a contender <laughs> if I'd been. done those present presentation courses, <laughs> things, things that I'd done. Oh, so what are you I... talking about tonight? Oh, I don't know. Um, version 1.019 of Half-Life Life, and some comedy bits at the end that I've forgotten and I can't find in my pile of paper, so we'll find out later. Good to be prepared, isn't it? Let's get on with the buyer's guide. So, Ash, I'm looking forward to Cool Pool. Cool Pool. But that's not what we're talking about first. No, that is what we're talking about first. Oh, good. Cool good. Pool. <laughs> that's even more easy to look forward to. Absolutely. It. You can actually stop looking forward to it. Here we go. Uh, now, Cool Pool is actually uh, a Sierra game. And it's from the same range we looked at on a previous show. We looked at uh, Train Town which was a nice game for grown-ups and kids. And this is from the same range. And it does take a bit of skill. It's not just bish bash bosh, yeah. is it? Yeah, yeah. And uh, actually, with this particular game, I think there are different ways of playing which can make it more difficult or more straightforward. Mm. Uh, so I think it'd be so quite good. So it's an adult playing a child. Yeah, Great. absolutely. Let's have a sort of an, an inherent sort of um, uh, handicap. What we've got here, uh, we can play classic games, cool games on standard tables, or cool games on cool tables. We'll just look at a classic standard game, straightforward eight ball pool, what people in this country would think of when they think of pool. Sure. And we're going to play it on easy, easy for obvious reasons. Uh, so, uh, and we will we'll play against each other, why not? Two player game. My money's on you. Okay. Uh, play one is me. Ash, play two. two. I have Should we name in? Yeah, let's, it's, it's got to be worth it. Can you just put one in? Lully. There you go. And it's now just building the table, and so it's national. Oh, it has to go and build the table. Oh. So, with hammer and nails. Good graphics, aren't they? But it's, it's a nice, simple, but uh, involving sort of environment. I'm up first. Now, because we're playing in easy mode, I can use... If I was playing in normal mode, I'd have to sort of just position the cue and, and hit, hit the ball. Right. But with this, because I'm in easy mode, and this would be perfect for a child or a simpleton like me, you can say, well, this, this ball here is sort of like a target. It's not really a ball there, it's where the cue ball's going to land. And so I'm going to say, I want the cue ball to land about there, and you can see it changed view, and that's slightly to the left now. Okay. And I can also now say how I want to hit the ball. And we see these two spline lines come up. Okay. And you're doing that by use of the left and right it's click. It's all, yeah, left and right clicks, that's all. And so I can see where the cue ball and the coloured balls are going to go. So that's the sort of orientation okay. sort of thing. So and then you've, finally, you've plotted its orientation. Yeah, finally. You click and drag over the pool cue itself. The cue, and you can see both back. cues moving. And I release it. I'm going to give it a wallop. Oh, look at that. It looks like that blue ball's going in the corner, but it isn't. Tragic. Next yeah. player. I am, of course, hustling. Next you. player is me. Yes, I, the hustle was uh, designed for you, really, isn't it? Okay. Um, okay. Um, can I change the orientation here? Yeah, by... bottom right hand corner, you can see that the, you've got the different views which you so might So I can, at the bottom right hand corner, I can look at it this way, which would yeah. be my preference. Now, yeah. what I want to do is uh, take this, that's the orientation at the moment. Can yeah. I, I can. You right click where you want to hit. Right, okay. Well, I think what I want to do is, is hit it hard there. Okay, so hit, but just put, there you go. Okay. And I want to orientate, orientate it so it actually hits the black ball, which hits the green ball, which hits the brown ball, which hits the brown ball, which hits the yellow ball, which hits the blue ball. Okay? It's a shoo -in. How right. can you miss? So I'm going to really give it a wall, so a good wally. Back. And uh, didn't quite come off to, according to plan. Uh, there. Your go. Excellent plan Next though it player. was. Before, before we move on, I just want to show you another way you could play this. Um, like I said, if, if I was the grown-up and you were the wee bairn, <laughs> then what I could do is I can just mo move the cue around uh -huh. yeah, in a much more sort of traditional way. Yeah. And then literally I can uh, I change it so that I get this pointy arrow. I'll try this next time. Okay. And then I can just literally... Oh, you missed it all together. That makes it harder, which presumably oh. there. See, that was oh. a foul because I was trying. Next I was, player. But that, that, but I forgive you that. But if I want to do the same, yep. Orientate so you, it. Yeah, you rotate the cue, and then you have to move the the mouse to get a sort of pointy arrow. You'll see that in a second to actually okay. do the. You have to actually push with the mouse as well. Okay. Okay. A little push. So now, release the mouse. Releasing the mouse. Yeah. Point point it further towards the end at the, the front of the cue. The front there. Is that it? Yeah. When you see that pointy arrow. Right? Yeah. When you've got the pointy arrow, you can sort of click and shunt <laughs> the... There you go. Now you need to go 
Oh, <laughs> didn't do that really well. Though, Something bad I? happened there. I think. <laughs> but the principle. That's it. That's it. Look, see. Fantastic. Okay. Now, can you play on the internet sort of game? That's that something. Seems... I think we were talking about this earlier on, and you know, this looks kind of retro, really. There have been games like I this like around it, the world. It's very simple, nice, clean interface. But what we're actually going to have a look at, and hopefully, we'll pull this off. Uh, we kind of pulled it off in rehearsal, so let's see. Kind of. Uh, kind of. <laughs> um, is an uh, online game, which is much more sort of 21st century, I can say uh -huh. that. Um, and so here we have on their web server um, different 12, rooms. Sorry, where you can 12 play. beginners up, the six games going on. You can go let's, into the rooms. And you now, can... actually, that's a bit disappointing because. Oh, there's two openings, so let's try it. If we go into beginners, I am Ash indeed. Off you go. And are we online now? Yeah, we're now going online. Now, it's difficult to see from where I'm sitting, but. In this list of people who are playing, yeah. anyone who's in white is free. Right, well, I'm afraid you're playing against I am yourself. Today. Sad and lonely. But if, um, it, if it was white, and for example, we could yep. play Bad Girl or uh, Ace or, That's or right. whatever. Okay, uh, let's sum this game up. Yep. How much are we going to spend? What sort of this spec is do we need? 20 pounds. Uh, it's a reasonable specification. Um, it, you know, sort of a low specification, a Pentium nowadays. Okay, so Pentium low class doesn't matter, doesn't yep. matter the latest. Yep. Only 20 pounds, that's and good. Pounds. You can play online. Yep. Do you know it? I think that's one of my favourite games that you've shown nice, me. simple game for the family. Yeah, simple we like. Absolutely. Nobody dies. It's great. <laughs> okay. Pool room um, brawl. Uh, there's a pool room brawl later. <laughs> What you got for me on the news just in front? Oh, yes. We are going to do something we haven't done before. We're going to show a spoiler. Uh, we're going to have a look at the end of Quake 3. Now, there are well, pro probably billions of Quake fans, Quake 3 fans in particular. You want to be careful here because you're going to look away. And look away when we tell them. This Might as well scream, go from the room like that now. Okay, okay, get ready. We're going to show you Quake 3 and a crucial part of it too now. <laughs> Final tier. Zero. Couple of questions. First of all, uh, tell me about Zero. Zero, big, bad, nasty man at the end of Quake 3. Okay, okay. but that looked great to me. The, yeah, these, these uh, end sequences are just sort of unsurpassed, absolutely beautiful. Okay, this is the end sequence. Yeah. The next sequence of which, again, if you really don't want to know what happens in the end, do this. <laughs> Yes. Is it over? Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tony, Rocking good soundtrack as well. Very good. Good sounds. soundtrack. Yeah. 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 And it's crucial that we know that there's some sort of element of stone turning there. Yep. There was a whole Medusan. Because if you know that Medusan thing, which Medu <laughs> then you, you'll laugh at the next bit. <laughs> which I'm told is very funny. <laughs> Hilarious, <laughs> how we laughed. Uh, yep, so that is the end sequence of Quake 3 with its little whimsical twist at the I, end. I think we haven't given too much away. Not though, too have much, we? we haven't ruined it. Which no. is good. Yeah. Why do we show that? Just to show off, just to show, okay. to say that we finished it. Okay, there you are. Let's bring the boy in. What's going on in the e bag? What's going on, I think, actually, is, is, is that the people who do the games for this show are spending too much time doing the games. They're, They're spending too much this. time inside. Aren't yeah. They? Um, uh, he didn't leave his name, he or she didn't leave his name, I'm afraid, for this particular email, but I thought we'd go with it anyway. Uh, the other day I loaded on um, an add-on for Half-Life and it said that I needed version 1.019 for the add-on, but I can't find a website that has it. Do you know when I can find this version of version 1.019? If so, where? It is, it is um, one of the big deals with playing online games, is frequently if you're connecting to a server, <coughs> you need, it's not even the latest version, the version that they are running, which is mm. often the latest version. Which is, so, so it means upgrading these games isn't just a question of making them work best on your system. If you want to play in the online community, you've got to have them. And the short answer to the question is, if you want general Half-Life stuff, planethalflife.com is one I use. www.planethalflife, all one word, dot com. Dot com, yeah. But for generic... <laughs> Files for all sorts of games for Quake, for Half Life, Unreal. Um, Fileplanet.com is a very good one if you just need to get the files and you're not so much interested in the sort of information. Is it fairly simple to go to something like Yahoo or an, an ordinary so, so search engine and do a search on Half Life and things yeah, like that? Yeah, but generally I think what you'll find is with something like Half Life, you'll quickly find a site that then will take you to loads of other sites. Oh, right. There's a really good community because it's all about online yeah. gaming. The, the online community is excellently facilitated. And can I just say. Excellent, <coughs> no, you can't. Excellently <laughs> facilitated. I know, I just about said it. I just about came up with uh, it. We have to move on. Send your name in. Send your name in. That's worth saying, to be fair. 
please send in your name. It amuses us. It keeps us in touch. We know you're there then. OK, what's our next demonstration about? Ah, nerd, nerds, Sorry, talking of nerds. A, was that a surprise question? Yeah, I, knew that, I knew there was something we were going to do. Um, the Gamers Networking Kit. I'm just going to bring over um, something very dull for us to look at. I don't know if well, you, you say it's dull, your but expert it, TV hand to hold this. I will. Uh, this is a card. Fantastic. You see? It takes years of training to see. Uh, that's right. That. That, again. And there's a chip. Yes, chips are plenty. So what does this, this do? Uh, what this is, well, it's, it's from a German company called Sitecom. And what they've provided is a very, very simple way to network two computers. M mainly, they're selling it as a way of doing on of network gaming. Yeah. Um, when I try these games out at home, Quake and Unreal and things like that that we've tried, I quite often invite a friend round and because I've got two PCs networked together, we can play them against each other and sort of try out the online stuff without running up a huge phone bill and without me embarrassing myself in front of a world Which is of, always a worry. of expert players. It's got a real worry for me. Mm -hmm. um, this is a very cheap, very simple way of doing things. Um, it's 35 pounds and what you get is two of these, obviously one for each PC. Yeah and um, an eight meter cable. For anyone who's interested, this is what we call a crossover cable. Yeah. Now all that means is, is that the wires are sort of twisted round so that I can plug one end into one computer and one into the other computer. Okay. Traditionally, with a network which uses, I'm gonna get a bit technical now, cable. which uses these RJ45 connectors. Yeah. Uh, see, I, I knew I was in there, it had to be. Um, <laughs> you need what we call a hub. Which is basically all a hub is is a box that you plug everyone yeah. into, yeah. so they can talk. Basically, to each other. you get two different cables going into a junction box, yeah. and off to different machines. The benefit of using a hub is you can have sixteen computers talking to each other. With this, it's a very simple solution: just a point to point, peer to peer. I have a spare hub at home. If you've got a spare hub yeah, with eight different gaps in it, yeah. But that wouldn't be necessary for Not this. Not necessary. The idea is card in each PC, yeah. cable between the two. Yeah. No need for a hub. But the nice thing is. These are 100 megabit cards, which is as, pretty much as fast as people use nowadays. Uh, so if you wanted to buy a hub or if you wanted to connect to a bigger network, this would be a good enough card to do it with. So they kept things down to a minimum, but you're not getting into a redundant technology. This is a great starter kit for people doing networking at home or... Are you saying that if you got this and you, you just actually put two together, that yep. down the line, if you wanted to bring in a third or fourth, yep. you could get a hub, yes. and this would go into the hub? Absolutely right. That's perfect. So yeah. it's, it's, it, you get a two uses out of it, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Which but is it's only, like, it's only 35 pounds. It's, it's a network card, yeah. as well as a gaming edition, Yeah, really, add-on. Yeah. A, a lot of my friends keep network cards in their machines so that when you know, I, I try to avoid these meetings, yeah. uh, I'm going to mention my friend's name, Dan. Hi, Dan. Dan's fault. Sure. He's always doing this, <laughs> always invites me, I always refuse. Yeah. Um, and they get a hub and they get sort of six machines around and you can all play a, a game. It's very exciting. It's very sad, actually. It's also very sad. Tell me, um, would they work on Macs? You know, if people just got these, an iMac, would that uh, help them? The, these, no. I, I, no, you wouldn't use these with Macs. Uh, and equally, if you had a laptop, you'd need a laptop card. But at home... A laptop networking card. Yeah, like I said, at home I've got a tiny little hub set up just in case. But just to mention this while we're talking about this, with Windows 98 Second Edition, there's a wonderful thing on there, which is um, internet sharing, which means that um, I have ISDN on my computer, and it means my girlfriend can use uh, her computer to get onto the internet at the same time as me, because the internet connection is shared by both computers. Again, so using so you, a simple you connection. Get the benefit like this. Of, uh, both get the benefit of both ISDN. get the benefit of Fantastic. It's it's £35. Really pounds. Is it available yeah. now? It is, yeah. It's a snip. £35 pounds from it's, Sitecom. Uh, exclusively designed for PCs, not yeah. for Macs or laptops, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you like it. Yeah, well, it's a great thing to do, and it's, it's a really cheap introduction. It's a, thank you very much. It's a cheap way of getting into playing, and it's the most exciting way of doing it when all is said and done. Games against a competitor, as opposed to just playing against yourself. Mm. Effortless. Mm. Absolutely, it was. I just, you walk and you talk, and I just think, that's so good. Gordon Taylor sent in some things about... The former the Secretary of the <coughs> Players' Union. Uh, I think it is him, actually. He obviously okay. is a viewer. Hello, Gordon. Well done, Gordon. And uh, he was saying, it's like, if AOL built cars, and, uh, okay, self-explanatory. The car would often refuse to start and owners would just expect this to tr and try again later. You see, I'm not an AOL user, never have been, so presumably there are these are like these problems are that AOL users Yes, these, these are AOL to. gripes. It's interesting, actually, that, that um, it, we're, it's moving on from Microsoft and going on to a um, thing. For example, it would not be possible to upgrade your AOL stereo. Um, things, or well, somebody here like that, <laughs> I don't know, fair enough. Um, I didn't find that amusing. 
Uh, how about Ash this one? Did. The one you might like this one. Perhaps we can ask Ash. Ash, yeah. as I say goodbye to you and oh, thank these, you very These much. all sound actionable to me, yeah. so I'm not going to smile you, or would laugh. Would you say that was funny and... No, and I can't. I can't po it would be a legal suicide on my part okay. to laugh. Thank you very much for your input tonight. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. And thanks also to uh, Chris. And me. Hello. Um, just remembered him. Legal suicide. Um, now let's tell you where you can address us to and email us with your gags which are going to amuse us. It's uh, buyersguide at sky.tvchannel.co.uk. Or you can join us on the forum at www.tvchannel.co.uk. And, of course, um, you can also, if you wish, sue us via the song <laughs> Conduits. OK, that's uh, all from Ash, Chris and myself, Will Henry. And until the next time on Buyer's Guide, bye-bye. <laughs>